Thanks, Claude. Um, we'll open up today. We finished last week of our off week working on uh, Florida, kind of the last day, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, getting in some, some game plan prep and trying to get ahead. And then today we'll kind of do the same uh, continuation. Players were off this weekend. It was good for them to get a break. I know most of them came back uh, excited yesterday and looking forward to an opportunity to play in uh, what I think is one of the best games in all of college football in terms of the pageantry, the 50-50 stands, the neutral site, uh, really cool atmosphere that we'll get to play in in Jacksonville and uh, looking forward to a really good football team. Coach, I'll get the quarterback question rolling today right off the bat for you. I guess, first of all, can you just kind of clarify your comments to Chris Lowe last Wednesday about kind of what you meant about the current situation? And part two of my question is, assuming JT is healthy, uh, how are you going to go about deciding this week who will start the game Saturday against Florida? Well, it's just like I told him, is everything's going to be based on practice. And no decision has been made whatsoever. And he did practice uh, Wednesday. and. Uh, did, did pretty good, and then he practiced Thursday and, and did well in terms of didn't have pain before, during, or after, and that's what we're looking for is, is it bothering you today? No. Can you throw today? Yes. Did you throw today? Yes. How does it feel after? Not pain there. And, again, we'll continue down that same path uh, today with him and see how he feels. Good thing is he's gotten a good Friday, Saturday, Sunday, really almost four days once you count from the last practice to this practice, all the players have. So uh, in terms of that, it'll be based on how practice goes. And um, no determination has been made, nor will it be made. It's based on performance on the field. And uh, it's like just like with our guys that came back from ankle injuries. I mean, they were back, and everybody was asking about Darnell. Well, Darnell was back, and he was 100% of what he could be 100%. But he wasn't really ready to play yet either. So I think it all depends on uh, where where JT is and where Stetson is and what gives us the best chance to win. And Stetson's done a good job since he's been playing, and JT's done a good job when he's played. The good thing is we we feel like we've got really three or four good quarterbacks that are ready to play. This is, I'm sorry. This is the uh, first time since 2017 that this is not a top ten uh, matchup, and it kind of highlights that. You've, there's only one other team in the East right now that's in the in the top 25. Does it uh, is the is the East down, or do you believe that the, the you know that that's uh, misleading? That these the, the, the division is stronger than it looks according to the records and rankings. Hard to say. We haven't played everybody on the East. I don't know uh, the answer to that. I know that uh, the SEC is a really tough conference to play in. So when I sit back and watch games on Saturday, there's some really tough games in the SEC, whether it's East, West, West, East. I mean, it's a tough conference. So uh, a lot of games are decided. They're really close games typically. And uh, Florida's been in a couple of those. They've ended up on the, the short side of, but they've got a really good football team. And um, I think the SEC East is a really good conference, you know, really good side of a conference. But uh, who am I to judge when, you know, we, we see each other more than most people do in terms of watching tape and crossover. Kirby, with regard to the quarterback situation, you, you've handled some pretty difficult, you know, uh, hard decisions over the years. How much is chemistry? Is chemistry part of that? And it, is do you do you address that in any way? And if so, how with the team? Yeah, chemistry is very important, but I don't typically address it with the team. I don't feel like we have a chemistry issue with either quarterback. I've said repeatedly, I don't think our offensive players really pay attention to or know who's back there most of the time, especially this year where there's been a lot of interchangeable parts. I mean, Carson's gone with the ones. Stetson's gone with the ones. JT's gone with the ones. JT's been out. Carson's been hurt. Stetson's had lower back. I mean, we've had a revolving door in terms of guys that have gone there. I, I really don't think that it's uh, a big deal for the uh, offensive players in terms of who's in there and the continuity piece. Kirby, is, is uh, JT limited at all in anything he can do in practice this week? And um, is it likely that you'll, you'll see both of those guys? <laughs> Again, it's going to depend on how they practice and what they do. Is it likely that we will see both of them? I don't, I don't know. They haven't seen practice today. I'd like to see practice today to know a little better about, OK, well, where is he at? Based on Wednesday and Thursday, he was able to throw without pain. That's a step one. Next step is. 
can I move? Can I uh, can I throw the accuracy? Can I do all the things that are required to to play quarterback? So um, I, I I don't know if he can do those things just yet, and we'll see. You know, by by how we practice this week. Kirby, you've gone up against Coach Mullen plenty. Uh, what is it that makes him just a, a really good play caller? And what, what are you seeing out of what what he's doing this year with with the the team he has on offense? He always does a great job of utilizing the skill set of the players he has. You know, probably more at Mississippi State, he had different kinds of quarterbacks. He went through. I mean, he he he's proven that he can win with all kinds, whether you say it's a pocket QB, whether you say it's a, a running QB, you say it's a dual threat QB. Everybody has these classifications, but he plays to the skill set of his skill players, and that includes his quarterback. So seeing what he's done with Dak, seeing what he's done with Trask, seeing what he's done with uh, Tim Tebow even, he goes far back when he had him. He's done a tremendous job of packaging uh, what they do well, whether that's play action, whether that, I mean, he has a lot of different packages he uses. and. Sometimes the history of that can be detrimental to you because you end up chasing ghosts of, of, of things he's done in the past or plays he used. And at the end of the day, it boils down a lot more to how do the players play, not what are the defenses or offensive that we call. Kirby, um, on the quarterbacks, are you OK with the idea of rotating week to week and even rotating quarterbacks within the game? I'll say it again. I'm really OK with whoever the best guy that gives us the best chance to win is. And that's based on practice and health. And it'll continue to be that way the rest of the year. It's not, I mean, the question of are you OK rotating them is really not relevant if they're not both completely healthy. So I just go off, A, are they healthy? And who gives us the best chance to win based on what we think we need to do offensively against their defense? Did your break from uh, practice give you a chance to uh, watch any of the uh, Braves NLCS, and are you you enjoying uh, you enjoying the Braves postseason? I was excited for the Braves. I got to see the uh, end of the game. I guess uh, Saturday night. I got to see the end of that after some of the uh, college games were over. But certainly excited for Atlanta and the state of Georgia, and uh, those guys have done a tremendous job closing and playing well at the end of the year. Kirby, what about their quarterback situation? They've been playing two guys. Is the offense similar with, with either one of those guys in there? They, they really don't hold back. They, they may feel like there's differences that I'm not aware of, but when you look at the, 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 the quarterback reels, there's plays within each game that both quarterbacks run. They don't you know, not run quarterback draw or not do drop back pass or not do zone read or not do speed option with one guy or the other. There's most packages they both carry. Um, now, he, you know, he may have some that are – he may limit one guy's package as opposed to the other, but the way the game's called, uh, they have very similar plays. Um, I think they're physically different in their build, um, both tremendous a athletes uh, and both really tough guys to defend in terms of 53 yards of sideline and uh, extra hat in the run game makes it tough. Last year you were without Jordan Davis <clears throat> going into this game. You were also without uh, George Pickens. You should have you know, Jordan back this year. What will that mean for your team? Well, I think the depth on the defense line as a whole is big. You know, we were, uh, we were, we were banged up some last year and uh, didn't play real well, honestly. Um, and, you know, anytime you've got depth at most positions, it helps, especially in this game. Um, I think Jordan being back and being healthy is very important to us in terms of the run game and being able to control the run game. And uh, his ability to play Multiple snaps will be important. He's got to play in this game because he's a dominant player up front. But uh, they've played against him before. I mean, they know Jordan's a good player. And uh, we'll need a lot of guys to play because those defensive linemen, they can't play more than 30 to 35 snaps a game. Kirby, over the bye week, I'm sure you all had a chance to do a lot of you know self-scouting and that kind of stuff early in the week. Just from a, I guess, just what does that process look like for y'all? And I guess what are some of those areas that you know y'all really identified as needing to improve heading into this week and the, the last half of the season? Well, we look at everything. We look at statistics and numbers and, and where we are, things we've done well, things we've done poorly. Sometimes we try to you know, bring a new wrinkle that maybe another team's done. We study other teams that are doing well in certain areas, third down, red area. And there's really not an area that we can't improve on. So we didn't take the week and say, ooh, we got to just do this. but. Uh, both offense, defense, and special teams, 
went back and looked at the first seven and said what we did well, what we did poorly, and what we can improve on, and we tried to attack those. Coaches, I'm going to ask you about uh, Chris Smith, uh, Amir Speed, Kenny Mack, how they're doing. Are they able to play this week or not? Yeah, they were all able to practice last week. We're hopeful to, to, to have them back 100%. Uh, they were beat up and banged up last week, but they practiced. So it's a matter of are they 100% this week? And uh, with three days off, we'll, we'll find out a lot more today about uh, kind of where each one of those guys is. I think uh, Chris and Kenny are, are, are much closer. Amir is hopefully getting there. Kirby, I know coaches uh, you know, find anything to worry about. With, with Florida being two and three, do you worry that your guys won't be as uh, zoned in on them um, you know, as when they, they were really highly ranked the last couple of years? No, this game's not about rankings. It's never been about rankings. It's uh, it's a rival game. Our kids understand that. I mean, one of their losses is, was to Alabama, in which they played a really good game at home, had an opportunity to win, and then you know, two road games. So it's it's not about records, and uh, no, don't think it ever is. It's a lot more about what we do, not about records. Curry, I think last week uh, maybe you uh, answered a question from Chris about, uh, I mean, Chip about Georgia, Florida and uh, home and home versus down in Jacksonville. You, your quote was it's complex as far as recruiting goes down there. What is involved with allowing both teams to be able to recruit at a, in this case, a neutral site game in Jacksonville? Well, it's against NCAA rules. So you're trying to get a rule change that exists in terms of being off your campus and being able to recruit. There's being able to recruit and then there's being able to give tickets, two different things. So people would argue if you can give tickets, that's recruiting. That's not recruiting to me just because you hand somebody a ticket. You don't see them. I mean, we had recruits at the Georgia uh, Clemson game, but we had no contact with them. So that's not really recruiting. That's uh, an invitation to watch us, which they can do that on TV. Uh, they can't interact with us. So. That, that, I can't change that rule. That's not a rule that's within. Attempted at looking at potentially changing that rule? Not really, because I, I, we don't have time. I mean, we fly in, we well, prepare for the game, we play the game, and we leave. We're, we're going to stay afterwards and hang out with them. I mean, the, the, you, can't really, you can't really do that, and you're not showing off your facility. So it's, it's much tougher in regards to that. So it's not, it's not as simple as, well, let's just make it where you can recruit down there. That's not. It's not really the answer either. Did the off week help the wide receiver core uh, get healthier? Or is that something, again, you're going to have to look at this week? Well, certainly think it's going to help recovery in terms of, uh, of legs. But, you know, Jermaine's had a, a growing that's been bothering him. We're hopeful that he'll be 100%. He, he practiced all last week. So the key there is getting those guys. But Rosamy um, has battled back from the ankle. Um, it continues to improve. You know, Dom and George are, are probably still a little ways away. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those deals that, that we're trying to get healthy, but Arian is much closer, so we, we hope so. But if anything, it's going to help the guys that are playing's legs in terms of uh, being fresher and, and being recovered. But, you know, that's all relative because they're coming off an off week too. Kirby, I know it doesn't affect this game, obviously, but I'm, I'm curious about your, your background when you were being recruited. Was Florida ever in the picture when you were a player as a recruit? Yeah, I was recruited to Florida. I went on a official visit to Florida, so I did a trip down there, and and uh, it was not. It was actually closer than Athens, um, to where I grew up. So, yeah, I was recruited by Florida. Kirby, how much time did you guys spend in the off week preparing for this game, or was it all just in turn working on your team last week? It's both. I mean, we work at, we work on future opponents. We look at future opponents. We look at ourselves. That's the self scout piece. And like I said at the start, we we we, we took a, a portion of what they do on Wednesday, but Wednesday was primarily development and, and working on our team. And then Thursday was uh, almost all Florida, other than a little bit of good on good. So we worked on future opponents, Florida, and ourselves. To that end, what, when you're looking at Florida, what concerns you? Well, I think first you start out with explosive plays. They're, they're either first in the SEC or 
uh, top 10 in the country in explosive plays. They're a very explosive team uh, in terms of what they do. Their, their run game has been really special because you talk about the quarterback in the run game plus their ability to uh, get the ball to three good backs. Um, they do a great job of that. So uh, when you talk about Florida up front, they've got massive men. They have really big defensive line, uh, bigger than what we faced. Um, they, they're tough to run the ball against, especially inside. Um, you know, I don't think you can look at one game as a picture and say that that's the way it goes. I think they're uh, really talented out on the perimeter. The, the corners they've got, safeties they got, have played a long time for them. So, and then their specialists are, are really good players too. They, they play special teams like we do. You can tell there's a major priority put on it when their starting uh, receivers and starting running backs and starting linebackers are all over their special teams. Kirby, is uh, Nakobe Dean dealing with an injury? And can you uh, tell us how long Kendall Milton might be out? Don't know how long on Kendall. Um, uh, he had a slight MCL, so don't know how many weeks it will be. Um, Nakobe's fine. Um, talking about explosive plays with Florida, your secondary's played pretty good this year, I, I think, statistically. But I, I'm interested in your assessment of how the secondary has played. and. Specifically, the, what the front seven is very well documented, what they've been able to do. How much has that affected their pretty good play to this point? I think um, our secondary has, has obviously been very young. Um, they, they've got a couple experienced players between Lewis Chris and, and DK Count and other places, but everybody else is relatively new. Uh, they've meshed, they've communicated well. Uh, we've made some things simpler uh, for them so that there's not as much confusion there. I think limiting explosive plays in the run game, which is part of the secondary's job, and the pass game is really critical in this game. Um, can't give up explosives, which we, we did last year. You can't give up repeated explosives and expect to win games. Um, it's just not going to happen. So we've got to limit those, and I've been proud of the way they played thus far. Kirby, how different is the, the Florida offense from anything you've seen, or is it similar to anyone that you've played yet? I noticed they were averaging over 500 yards a game. I guess. Yeah, it's very different than teams we've seen because uh, I think Dan's scheme is different. I mean, he's very flexible in what he can do. It's not uh, you know one-dimensional. I think you know last year you could argue they were a pass-first team. Um, they had really good weapons. They had an unbelievable tight end along with a quarterback and all kinds of weapons around them. They still have weapons now. They're different at the quarterback position. And like I said earlier, he's using their strengths. He's using their strengths to the tune of 500 yards of offense a, a game, which is pretty special. And uh, he's always been able to generate offense and play really good offense um, because he's flexible in what he does. Coach, you were on that 1997 team, correct, when Georgia beat Florida? Yes. Do you remember anything about that game and kind of breaking that streak? And, you know, what was your um, kind of thoughts towards Florida when you finally chose Georgia? And when did that finally come about? Uh, it came about whenever Georgia offered me, which was right about signing date. It was, it was, uh, so that's as soon as they offered, I, I decided to come. But it was late in the process. Um, as far as that game, it was, you know, Georgia, Florida, and Jacksonville. It was a, a big game, but we were – uh, heavy, heavy underdogs, and they were probably the more talented team, to be honest. Um, but it was a good upset. They had a lot of injuries, and uh, we were able to capitalize on some turnovers. Kirby, uh, looking back at the game last year, you know, the second half of the second quarter, uh, Florida went from up seven to 17. But, you know, you clearly made the decision to try to get points because they were getting the ball. What is the fine line when you're going into half? Because interesting enough, about the same thing happened in the Super Bowl to the Chiefs last year. Yeah, it's always tough. I mean, I, I do think when you play a, a team that you think it's going to be a high-scoring game or you, they score a lot of points, you have to be willing to score points with them. you got to be able to score. And we had a lot of opportunities last year uh, to score offensively. We missed uh, some shots. We missed some runs. Uh, we missed some things, but at the end of the day, you, you can't give up explosives at the rate we gave them up. And if you give up explosives, that's probably the number one indicator, even more than uh, turnovers, to who wins games. And we just gave up too many and didn't uh, didn't make enough. Got time for two more questions? Anybody? Going back to that game, how badly was Stetson Bennett hurt when he went down on his shoulder? I know he stayed in the game, but he did not look the same. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. It would be hard for me to measure how badly. I mean, I know he got a shot, and and uh, he didn't have great feeling in it. But he's a tough kid. He's a competitor, and I couldn't tell you exactly how bad it was. Kirby, you mentioned the explosives of last year's game. What is different about your defense this year to better defend against those explosives from the Florida offense? Well, I, I think we've got some different ways to, to look at things. The communication's been better. Um, I would never say you're you're immune to it. I mean, right? The, the people take shots. They're going to take shots. We know that going into every game. Uh, we got to play well on the perimeter. We got to tackle well. We got to affect their quarterback. We got to cover their wideouts. We got to do all the same things we got to do every week. So you're not. Uh, it's not so easy to sit here and say one thing has to happen in order to do that. We've got to affect the quarterback, and whether that's through pressure or um, getting home. But a lot of this year comes around being able to control the run game and stop the run because they're. They're tremendous at both.